What's up guys, welcome to Get an A-N-T-O-K. -okay. If you are watching this video, you are screwed, but that's why you're like watching this video. Okay, I'm gonna help you write a T-O-K essay in an hour, two hours, -ish. you can do this, I got you. Also, if, um, you know, if you want to know who's paying for this video, you are. You can hire me as a tutor. You can get some feedback from me. I'll post my Fiverr link down at the bottom. That's why I've been so slow getting videos going because so many of you guys um, need my help. So I'm getting in touch with you. Please um, connect with me. I would love to help you out. And so, yeah, anyway, I'm going to show you how to formulate your TOK essay really quickly. I'm actually going to give a sentence by sentence breakdown of what you need to do. All right, let's do this. Okay, so the first thing I want to share is what each paragraph should look like. So first of all, we want to go, we want to go to Garamond because that's the most efficient font. Okay, so, oh, that's not Garamond, but boom. No, that's not it either. Okay, so what we want to do, oh, also, if you want to just like go on 2x speed here, do it. That's awesome for my analytics. Okay, so what you're going to do is, this is kind of like English class. You are going to do the first sentence, sentence number one, is going to be your topic sentence. What is the perspective that your evidence that your evidence makes? So you got to choose two AOKs, and what we're going to do is we're going to pick four body paragraphs. So for this perspective, I'm sorry. For this example, I'm going to talk about let's see, um, natural sciences, and I'm also going to talk about the arts. I got this awesome video. It's going to be hilarious. Also, if you steal my ideas, you're so screwed with this one because I'm kind of weird. Okay, so what you need to do first is pick two AOKs, and then you need to have two examples for each. Okay, now when I say examples here, I'm going to call these perspectives because what you want to do is have each of those two examples look at your prompt in a different way. That's the first thing you do. If you haven't found that yet, you might want to pause this video, go find them, then come back. Just kidding. Watch this whole video. Watch it like eight times. Okay, I'm going to stop. Let's do this. Okay, so you're that's supposed to be behind the text. Your first sentence, once you come up with the perspective, so paragraph two, so this is after your introduction, skip the introduction. Don't even do it. Do it later. It's not that important. There's also this video with like 60 million views about how to write an introduction. Eh, 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 eh. Okay. So start with paragraph two. You're going to do perspective one of AOKA. -A. So if the natural sciences is AOKA, -A, then AOKB -A is the arts. So we're going to look at two perspectives from each of these, okay? So you can get these from your good old TOK cheating websites, not mine, but I've got some examples here. Please steal my examples, just don't steal my thinking. Okay, so what we're going to do the first time, one sentence, only one sentence, telling me the topic sentence, just like eighth grade English. What is the perspective that your evidence makes? Bring up the evidence, bring up the perspective. Then, and this is really important, sentence number two, again, only one sentence here, introduce the evidence, okay? You don't wanna give this whole paragraph that takes eight sentences just to get to the evidence. I literally just read an essay that did that. It's awful. So far, we've got two sentences, okay? Then sentences three, four, and five, and there's some wiggle room here. They are going to quote, summarize, or paraphrase your evidence, okay? So three sentences, quoting, summarizing, or paraphrasing your evidence, okay? That's it. Don't go further, and I'll tell you why. Because then you're going to do five sentences that tell me exactly how the evidence and perspective applies. So we're going to discuss we're going to analyze, you're going to say, my evidence connects with the prompt, the title, this way. I'm gonna give you an example. And then finally, sentence number 11 is a one sentence explicit answering of the prompt. So you say, here's what the prompt is asking, here is my answer. Now you're gonna do this again in the conclusion, but always answer the prompt at the end of every paragraph. All right, is that clear? You wanna see an example? All right, let's see an example. So here is the prompt that I'm going to be answering. And if you chose this prompt, this is great. Don't steal my stuff because honestly, I chose this because don't choose Nazis, okay? So just a, just a great perspective for life. Don't choose Nazis. I'm gonna say this be even bigger. Don't steal my evidence because it's not that good, okay? Seriously, all right, let's do this. Let me show you sentence by sentence how I follow this. Let's go. 
Okay, so my topic sentence is going to be this. Let me scroll down a little bit. I'll start a new paragraph. All right. My topic sentence is this, one sentence. In one of the most horrible scientific studies of all time, Nazi scientists performed experiments on Jewish prisoners. What is the perspective? Here's a perspective. Demonstrating that some might say there are no boundaries of acceptable investigation within the AOK of natural sciences. So the prompt is this. If we conclude that there is some knowledge we should not pursue on ethical grounds, how can we determine the boundaries of acceptable investigation within an area of knowledge? Okay, so my topic sentence here says, how do we find the boundaries? There are no boundaries of acceptable investigation. That is one perspective. So um, if you're, you're gonna do another perspective on this, you're going to choose something that has the boundaries. So this is one perspective, okay? So now I'm gonna do another sentence now, doing nothing but introducing my evidence. And my evidence again is really weak because I don't want you all to steal. All right. According to the Holocaust Encyclopedia, Nazi scientists experimented for many different reasons. Oh my gosh, that's like the worst sentence I've ever written. Okay, but here's my evidence. So I'm going to put this in gray so you can see my evidence here. So here's my evidence. So remember, sentence number one is my topic sentence. Sentence number two introduces the evidence. Now I'm going to give you my evidence in three sentences or less. Some Jews were frozen to death as the scientists explored the effects of hypothermia. Other scientists tested new and experimental drugs on unwilling prisoners. Werner Fischer even used science as an excuse to experiment with mass sterilization. This is just awful. Okay, now I've got three examples that we're showing all of these things happen to the Jews. Um, but now we need to get away from the evidence and we need to give our perspective. So you found a perspective, good. Put it there, summarize it, paraphrase it, whatever, but then stop. And now you're going to do five sentences going over how this connects to the prompt. Discuss it. Talk about it. Just make sure the whole time you're talking about knowledge. So here's what I wrote. I'll put this in yellow. No, I don't want to do that. There we go. Okay. Though no one in the modern world agrees with these boundaries or seeming lack thereof, spoiler alert, it is clear that the Nazis did not think that there was some knowledge that was not worth pursuing because of ethics. Direct reference to the prompt. At first, it might seem like these scientists acted as if there were no boundaries to determine whether or not investigation is acceptable. But this would be an incorrect assumption. The Nazis had a very explicit and clear boundary. All of these experiments were conducted on Jews, not Germans. Additionally, the experiments were performed to benefit the German people at the expense of the Jews. This is awful. They were not just trying to destroy bodies with drugs. Instead, many of the drugs, which killed innocent Jews, were tested in attempts to make better medicine to win World War II. The Nazi scientists drew the boundary of acceptable investigation. This is my last sentence. I'm sorry. No, it's not. The Nazi scientists drew the boundary of acceptable investigation based on their own biases and assumptions about the superiority of their own race. They believed that they were superior, so they experimented on those that were deemed inferior. Okay, what I have done is I have told you how this evidence connects with the prompt. I've just discussed it, and I'm talking about knowledge. Where am I talking about knowledge? Bias and assumption, TOK terms, okay? So now I'm going to end the paragraph with one sentence that directly answers the prompt. They were guided by misinformation and racism and drew a boundary that virtually all of the modern world would label as evil. In the case of the Nazi scientists, the boundaries of acceptable investigation are determined by personal values, beliefs, and biases. So what I did there is kind of different than the topic sentence. I kind of shifted my view a little bit. If I'm editing this, and I'm turning this in like I'm a student. I might tweak a little bit, but the format works the same. You need to answer the prompt at the end, five sentences telling me how the evidence connects with the prompt. Really brief evidence section there. A sentence connecting the prompt and a topic sentence. Again, don't steal. You want one more? Of course you want one more. Let me do this. Okay, so now I'm going to do my other favorite prompt. Here we go. I know you guys want this. How can we distinguish between good and bad interpretations? Discuss with reference to the arts and one other area of knowledge. All right, I love this. And I'm going to give you one that is just crazy. Okay, 
Though the postmodern world believes that all art is up to interpretation in music, there are well-defined rules that can determine whether or not an interpretation is good or bad. Remember, the IB has already said we're so tired of all art is good and up for interpretation. I hate that stuff. Okay, so here's my introduction to the evidence. Again, this is so short. Last week, I watched a video on YouTube called Top 10 Worship Fails. Guys, this video is amazing. I don't care if you're religious or not. You got to watch this. I'm going to play it right now. it again. I'm not going to make you watch it again, but here's my evidence. Again, I paraphrase what you just saw. This video showed people playing music in churches and doing a terrible job of it. In one of the videos, a man on the saxophone played a worship song called Give Thanks with a Grateful Heart. It was bad. It was awful. It was one of the worst things in the world. Why? Because it was horribly out of tune. So again, that's more than th three sentences, but look how short it is. It's like three lines total. Again, your evidence doesn't have to be half a page long to be good evidence. It's about your analysis. It's about your instruct, your, your discussion. So now what I'm going to do again is I'm going to spend five or six sentences talking about what I just brought up as the evidence. So here we go. If I was to interpret this artistic performance, calling it artistic is nice, in a way that claimed it was skillful and beautiful, this would be considered a bad interpretation. A foundation of music is that it has to be in tune. This is, agreed, this is an agreed upon rule that transcends cultures. Though Western music has 12 notes and Arabic music has, for example, has 24. That's a terrible sentence. My bad. Though these notes and half tones may sound very different, it is still the goal of the musician to play these notes as written on the paper and as expected according to the key in which the song was written. If an artist wants to be creative in a genre such as jazz and play out of key, that would be an intentional decision. They play out off the key, but chose to play the correctly tuned notes in the new key. In the discipline of music in the arts, the ability to play in tune directly contributes to the interpretation of whether or not a musician is playing with skill. There is not a circumstance in which a musician accidentally playing out of tune would be considered good by any knowledge authority. So that's my discussion. Now I'm just going to end with one last sentence. Any interpretation saying that this performance is good is therefore a bad interpretation. Again, I'm closing with the prompt as it would ignore the expectations of all professional musicians. So I'm bringing up another TOK term, knowledge authority. And then in this case, knowledge authority as professional musicians. Okay, so now what you want to do at the end, your conclusion, what you want to do is this. Tell me what you have learned without summarizing. Okay, I say this all the time um, to my students in the real world and on Zoom, because I teach on Zoom now. Um, you don't want to summarize all of your points in this essay. And the reason is we know what you've already said. So instead, we need something new. We need something that is the lesson. So you have already said all of these things. So what? What's next? What are the implications? What should we learn? Or maybe this. What does this teach us about humanity? Why does this matter? Answering any of these questions in a conclusion will end your, end your essay in a way that is thought provoking. If you are just summarizing in your conclusion, you can totally do that. But this is a way to get a little bit of a higher score because you're already not really being impressive with your overall scope. If you want to, there are so many different other ways to do it, but you can do this with four pieces of evidence and um, four body paragraphs, one perspective in each paragraph. Now, I haven't talked about the introduction and that's because, um, you know what, you wanna spend more time talking about your evidence, okay? So in the introduction, 
bring up the topic, get to the thesis, which is where you give your opinion, or you can just, you can hint to your reader, I'm, don't write it like this, I'm going to answer the prompt more fully in the conclusion. Okay, so there you have it. All you need to do to pass the TOK essay is have two, um, two quality examples. They don't even need to be quality. You just need to be thinking about it well. Two examples for each of your AOKs. That's four AOKs. So, so I'm sorry, four pieces of evidence total for two AOKs. Two plus two is four. You're going to have two body paragraphs, and each of your paragraphs are going to look like this. Have a brief introduction. Don't freak out about the introduction. Just get to the thesis and get to your evidence as quickly as possible. Then stop your evidence so that you can analyze. Conclude with something new, something insightful, something interesting, and you will do a good job. I hope that TOK sucks a little bit less than it did at the beginning. Good luck. I'll see you later.